This is Managerial Accounting, Chapter 2, and Cost Concepts. Direct materials is raw materials that come, become an integral part of a product that can be conveniently traced directly to the product. So in this example, they're using a vehicle, a car. Um, so a radio installed on the automobile, the tires, the steering wheel, um, all of that would be direct materials. They're raw materials that go into making the product. When we talk about direct labor, um, we're talking about wages paid to the people who are working directly on the product. So these would be, in the manufacturing setting for a vehicle, assembly line workers, um, the person installing the tailpipe, the person installing the lights, the person putting the wheels on the vehicle. We, all wages paid to direct people directly working on the vehicle would be included in direct labor. Manufacturing overhead um, are costs that cannot be directly traced to specific units. This can be sometimes a hard concept to understand, but think about it in the way when you're trying to do cost accounting, you want to be very effective. You want to trace products that make sense, that can be directly traced, or that are easily traceable. Tracing thread um, and how much pieces of how many pieces of thread are going into a jacket, it seems it's tedious and time consuming and not necessarily beneficial. Sorry, I have a cold. So when we talk about manufacturing overhead, we're talking about indirect materials and indirect labor lubricants and cleaning supplies used on the automotive assembly plant, those aren't directly traceable to a specific car. Also, wages paid to employees who are not directly involved in production work. Examples are maintenance workers, janitors, and security guards. There's also non-manufacturing costs. Selling costs, these are the costs necessary to secure the order and deliver the product. This includes sales, sales commissions to people selling the product, advertising costs, um, shipping costs necessary to deliver the product. All of those costs would be part of selling costs. And administrative costs, all executive, so the CEO, CFO, all of us who are accountants, the accounting um, structure in your company would be administrative costs, clerical, Organizational costs, human resources, those are all administrative costs. When you are doing cost accounting, it's very important to decide whether or not a product a, co a product is has a product cost or a period cost. So a product cost includes direct material, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead. These product costs move from an inventory item, raw materials, right? into a cost of goods sold item, the income statement. Um, so cost of goods sold is the cost of the direct materials, the direct labor, and the ma manufacturing overhead. That go all goes into cost of goods sold. Period costs, on the other hand, are all selling and administrative costs. So this would include, um, you know, again, the salaries, the sales commission, the advertising, and you would know these expenses as expense items or income, state income statement items. So when you're forming the income statement, um, they, they differ slightly whether the, the company is a manufacturer or a merchandiser. A merchandising company is like a retail company that you would see in the mall or Walmart or something like that. They're not manufacturing the actual product, but they are selling you inventory. So the way that we find out the cost of goods sold from the merchandiser side, a merchandising company, um, you start with beginning merchandising inventory, your beginning inventory. You add all purchases to the to the number. This equals your goods available for sale. So we have beginning inventory, we make purchases. These are all the items we have available for sale during that time period. Could be a month, could be a year. Then we subtract out whatever we have on hand at the end of the period. So inventory at the end of the period is subtracted out because we didn't use that and it's still available. So that gives us our cost of goods sold. Now, a manufacturing company, you start with beginnish, finish, beginning finished goods inventory. So these have made it all the way through the manufacturing process, from raw materials to, from, to work in process, all the way to finished goods. So we take our beginning finished goods inventory, we add our cost of, man, 
goods manufactured. And there's a formula to get there, which we'll do later in the course, uh, later in this chapter. And then that gives us our goods available for sale. Now we subtract out our ending finished goods inventory right here, and that gives us our cost of goods sold. So it's again, it's slightly different from a manufacturing or a merchandiser, but the, the process of getting there is all the same. Um, so the basic equation for inventory is beginning balance plus additions equals ending balance plus withdrawals. Right, the withdrawals would be a negative number. So product flow, cost flows. So we need to identify how items go from raw materials all the way through the process. So you start with beginning raw material inventory. You add all your raw materials that are purchased. That gives you raw materials available for use. Now it's not available for sale yet. Um, so raw materials available for use, they're not available for sale yet because we haven't actually finished the product. Then you subtract out your ending raw material inventory and that gives you raw materials used in production. These items are removed from raw materials and placed into the production process. Therefore, they are called direct materials. Next, besides direct materials, which we understand how that gets there, we also have direct labor and manufacturing overhead. These conversion costs are costs incurred to convert the materials into a finished product. So that gives us our total manufacturing cost. Then our work in process is the work that we are manufacturing plus our total manufacturing cost for the period equals total work in process for the period. Now we subtract out ending work in process and that gives us our cost of goods manufactured. So this work in process is what we were just looking at. Now we're moving this work in process into finished goods because once we have the final cost of manufacture for the period, that goes into our finished goods inventory. So we have our beginning finished goods inventory plus our cost of goods manufactured equals cost of goods available for sale minus ending finished goods inventory equals our cost of goods sold. Now see there's two words that are different here. Manufactured, cost of manufactured, cost of goods sold. So this is how we get to cost of goods sold in a manufacturing company. Seems like a lot of words right now. We will do examples on how to actually calculate that. So our manufacturing cost flows. Raw materials are our cost, and they are balance sheet inventory items. Direct labor goes into work in process, which is a, 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 a balance sheet inventory item. Manufacturing also overhead also goes into work in process. Then that work is finished, and that goes into finished goods. And then the finished goods finally flows, once we have finished the goods and we put it out to sale, that, that's the cost of goods sold, which becomes an income statement expense item. All of our period costs go directly, selling an administrative, to the income sheet, in, income statement, which is an expense. So another very important, so first we have to decide, is it a product, is it the product cost or a period cost? And what's the cost behavior within a relevant range? So we're talking about whether or not the cost is fixed or variable. Variable means that the total variable cost changes as activity level changes. So the number of steering wheels changes with the number of cars we produce, whereas the building does not change with the number of cars we produce. We could produce 10 cars or 5,000 cars. And that's why it says within a relevant range. At a certain point, we may have to buy another building. But in general, building is a fixed cost, right? And whereas a steering wheel would be a variable cost. When you're thinking about it in total, variable changes with the number of cars we manufacture. And when you're thinking about it in total, fixed remains the same, no matter what the activity level is, right? But when you're thinking about it on a per unit level, each steering wheel costs the same over a wide range of activities, right? So each steering wheel, one steering wheel costs, let's say, $10. So each unit, the cost of the steering wheel is $10. Whereas a fixed cost, the building, if we produce more cars, the fixed cost per unit goes down because 
let's say we had a thousand dollars for rent and we produce one car well that fixed cost per unit is very high well now if we produce a hundred cars it's significantly less because we take that thousand dollars and now it's divided by, instead of dividing by one we divide by a thousand cars or a hundred cars so that's the idea of fixed and variable costs so um, we're going to do some homework examples in a separate video that help you identify how to actually put this into action.